What's up guys, so today we're talking about ventilator settings. I'm going to explain this really basic so anyone watching this can understand. It doesn't matter what your background is, what you do know, what you don't know, you're going to be able to understand from nothing to having a good understanding of how to set up a ventilator and how to use it. Obviously there's more to it, but this is just that foundation knowledge. So we're gonna discuss ventilator modes, ventilator types, ventilator settings, and ventilator strategy. So the two modes you have is volume control modes or you have a pressure control mode. So some ventilators are going to let you set a pressure where some ventilators are going to let you set a volume. So if you have a volume controlled ventilator, which means that you're going to be setting how much volume, you, volume you're gonna be putting into the patient. General tidal volume, which is how much air you're breathing in a normal breath is about six to eight mils per kilogram. Average size person, average between somewhere it's between six and eight is you're gonna give about 500 mils per ventilation. So that allows you to set how much air you want to give with each breath. If it is a pressure control, we're going to set how much pressure. So if you set it to 25 millimeters of mercury as the maximum pressure, it will give volume until it hits that pressure. It'll tell you how much volume it's given, but you don't set how much volume, you're only setting pressure. So that's pressure controlled versus volume control. Depending on what's wrong with the patient, depending on what's happening, we might wanna decrease this or increase this. Then we have your respiration rate. Normally we wanna just set whatever is normal. If a patient is breathing very fast, Sometimes we want to match that rate of breathing depending on what's happening. Because if they've got sepsis and they're breathing at a rate of like 30, you might actually want to match that speed. Because by matching the speed, you're also matching the respiratory alkalosis or the um, compensatory respiratory alkalosis that they're busy generating to try and assist with whatever metabolic issue they have. It gets a bit more complicated. So you have your tidal volume, you have your, res your respiration rate. So somewhere between 12 and 20 is fine. You can always change that. Then you have your FiO2 or your fractional inspiratory of oxygen. So how much, what is the percent of oxygen? So this is normally like a 0.21 to one. Pretty much what that means is that you're either gonna be giving 21%, which is what's in the air, so 0.21, or 50%, which would be 0.5 FiO2, or one FiO2, which is 100%. Normally we wanna stop patients on just 100% oxygen, and then once they're on the vent and we can see what's happening with their sats and all that sort of thing, then we can wean them down to less oxygen because we don't want to be giving them too much oxygen. That's not good. So you have your FiO2, then you have your PEEP. So PEEP stands for positive end expiratory pressure. This is the pressure that is against a patient exhaling. So kind of like a dog or a person sticking their head out the side of a window while it's driving down the highway, you have this positive or this air pressure on your exhale. And when you inhale, it's this, there's, there's this extra bit of pressure. That is what PEEP is. So it helps your lungs stay open. If we want to help you keep your lungs open or if we're trying to get more of your lung to open because of something that's happened, we can then increase your PEEP and then that helps keep the alveoli nice and open, which helps ventilation and the movement of carbon dioxide and oxygen. The other things you wanna set is then whether you're using your volume control or your pressure control. Normally the kind of the standard is pretty much um, volume control. So you're setting how much volume you're giving. Then you're going to want to set your P max, which is how much your maximum pressure. Generally, we're looking at like 30, maximum 35 millimeters of mercury. But that's pretty standard to not go above that because we don't want to cause barotrauma. We don't want to cause damage to the lungs. Some patients, you're going to have high pressures, like a patient who has asthma, you're going to have high pressures. So being, being aware of that is important, but also understanding that that's not necessarily a good thing. So we've discussed your respiration rate, your tidal volume, your PEEP, your FiO2, or your, or your percent of oxygen, your maximum pressure, your P max, and then you're going to have your IE ratio. So your inspiratory and expiratory ratio. So this is a ratio and not a number. So if you have a ratio of one to two, meaning that you inspire for one, which for instance, let's say one second, and then you're gonna expire for two. So that's a ratio of one to two, which means that for every second I'm inhaling, I'm going to exhale for two seconds. So it is a ratio. It's important to understand that it's not a, you're gonna inhale for one second and exhale for two seconds, because that would set how fast you breathe. What is more important to understand is that if you set a ratio of like one to four, it means that for one second you'll be breathing in and for four seconds you'll be breathing out. So for certain patients, we, we are wanting to have a longer expiratory time. So if we intubate a patient who has asthma, for instance, which we'll talk about later on, we wanna have a very long expiratory time to allow them to 
exhale all of the carbon dioxide that's trapped. So we're gonna have a longer IE ratio, inspiratory, expiratory ratio. So those are pretty much the stock standard of ventilator settings. Then you have ventilator modes. So there's a lot of modes. We're not gonna to touch on all of them now. We can touch on CMV, we can touch on SIMV, and we can talk about PEEP and um, BiPAP. So those are generally the four normal modes that you can be talking about. The ventilators that I typically use is a Oxylog 3000 plus. So those are the four modes on this ventilator. We're gonna just break those four down quickly. So CMV stands for controlled mandatory ventilations. So that's when the ventilator goes ventilate and the patient is forced to breathe. And it goes ventilate and the patient is forced to breathe. So it is a controlled mandatory ventilation. It's stock standard, it's in the wording. You set the ventilator to ventilate and it will ventilate. So you're setting how fast, you're setting how much. And so whether the patient is breathing or not breathing, it disregards that. You can set a trigger, but uh, it's not really designed for that sort of thing. So if the patient is not breathing, then great, which is kind of what we use it for. So if we RSI someone and now they're paralyzed and they're on the ventilator, they're not gonna be breathing anyway and we're gonna keep them paralyzed. So you're going to put on CMV, so controlled mandatory ventilation. Then on the other hand of CMV is we have SIMV, which is exactly what it sounds like, is, but it is kind of like turning the ventilator into a friend. So if you're breathing enough, then it's not going to actually force you to breathe, it's just going to assist you in your ventilation. So if we use SIMV, we'll set a trigger, which means that once the patient starts to inhale, the ventilator will then kick in and actually help you then finish that breath. So kind of like a gun, once you pull the trigger, once enough pressure has been applied, or once the patient causes enough negative pressure to cause a breath, it then triggers a breath and then the patient breathes. However, if the patient stops breathing, then it will breathe. So whether you're breathing or not breathing, CIMV actually works for both. You're gonna be setting your, your P max, you're gonna be setting your tidal volumes, your IE ratios, your um, FiO2, all these settings are still the same as SIMV and CMV, except for SIMV, you, you are going to be setting a trigger. Then we have a, another line of vent, ventilator modes, which is the other side of the line. So on this side, we have SIMV and CMV, these are, invasive ventilation modes, so not NIV modes, so non-invasive, they're invasive ventilations. Then we have NIV, which is non-invasive ventilation, which is like CPAP and BiPAP. So CPAP is continuous positive airway pressure. So it's when we have a patient who is awake, maintaining their own airway, and we put a mask on their face, and what happens is that then we, we then set what kind of pressures we're wanting. Once you put the Oxylog 3000 plus onto CPAP mode, you can no longer control your tidal volumes or your respiratory rates. Once it's on CPAP, you can only control your max pressures, so your P max, your FiO2 and your PEEP. So these are the important things. What you're gonna do is that, so CPAP is pretty much when you're just setting your PEEP. So PEEP is your expiratory pressure. So when they expire, when they're breathing out, it's how much pressure is being applied to their exhale. Because when they inhale, it doesn't add pressure. It just gives the same pressure. Then with CPAP on the Oxylog 3000 plus, you can add pressure support. So what pressure support is, is it kind of turns it into a form of BiPAP. So there's two, two kinds of pressures. There's two pressures in that. So you have your PEEP or your expiratory pressure. So when I exhale, the pressure being applied to my breathing. So then you set your pressure support, which is the pressure that's added to your ventilation when you inhale. So the general rule of thumb is that when you add your pressure support number to your PEEP number, they shouldn't be above 20. So if I have a pressure support of 10 and a PEEP of 10, that's pretty much as high as we wanna go. We don't want to cause too much problems or too much pressure. The same applies to when you use BiPAP. They're pretty similar in my understanding where you're gonna set a inspiratory pressure and an expiratory pressure, and that's pressure support versus PEEP. So if you want zero PEEP, so you've intubated someone with asthma, you're gonna have zero PEEP, meaning that when they exhale, there's no resistance against their exhale. Then you're gonna have no PEEP, but you're gonna have lots of pressure support because they're very tired. That's why we put them on PEEP. Or if you have a patient with um, APO, so acute pulmonary edema, you are going to put lots of PEEP on because we're wanting them to have more pressure to help open up the airways. So then you can have 10 PEEP and 10 
of uh, pressure support. Remember to just start low and go up. Uh, it can be very uncomfortable. If you, ever, if you ever have the opportunity, put on a mask and up the pressure support and peep to 10, 10, and you see how uncomfortable it is. If you, if you start at five and five, which is a nice place to start if you're setting up a ventilator, then you can up them slowly so that the patient can get more used to them. So those are the modes, those are the settings, and those are the types. So your uh, volume control and your pressure control and all those modes and CMV and FiO2 and respiration rates and tidal volumes and all these things. Okay, that's, that's pretty much ventilators in a nutshell. Then you have your ventilation strategy. There's a lot of opinions on this and you can look at them online. So I'm going to break them down into two general views, all right? The one view is a obstructive, so like asthma. So that is a obstructive pathophysiology. So that's pretty much on the one side. And then there's the damaged lung or what inverted commas I call a baby lung. That's how they need to be treated. So with a baby lung or someone who has like ARDS or just, you know, chest infection or something else is wrong with their lungs, except for something like asthma or where there's air trapping, or COPD, we are wanting to treat these lungs like baby lungs. So we want to start off with a lower than normal tidal volume. So we're going to use a volume control ventilation. So we're going to start off our ventilations at about six, seven to six mils per kilogram. And then we're going to have like a normal like peep of five is fine. And then we're going to have a max pressure of 35. That's pretty normal. So all of your settings can be pretty much normal, but the only thing you're wanting to change is you're wanting to decrease your tidal volume. So once you have them on the ventilator and they're oxygenating and they're ventilating, we will then be able to drop our tidal volumes just a little bit lower and a little bit lower and you'll see how they manage better on the ventilator. Because parts of their lungs are damaged, there's less lung to ventilate. And so if you ventilate less into those lungs and you can ventilate faster, they do much better. So for these patients, you want to have a faster respiration rate and a slower or a smaller tidal volume. So small volumes and quicker. I will talk about ventilation and oxygenation at the end of the video. I do have a separate video to that. So for the baby lung or the ARDS or the chest infection lung, we are wanting to give small volumes fast. Not a problem. PEEP is going to be important for oxygenation. When it comes to an a obstructive lung, like someone with asthma or COPD or something like that, where we have air trapping and there's time is needed for air to, or CO2 to exit the lungs, what we're going to do is we're going to have a much slower rate and we're going to have bigger volumes. So what does that allow? It allows us to maintain a minute volume. Now the big word. Minute volume is how much air you breathe in a minute. So you can take your tidal volume and times it by your respiration rate to get your minute volume. It is important to maintain minute volume. It doesn't matter if you increase your respiration rate and you decrease your tidal volume, as long as your minute volume stays the same and the opposite is also true. So for asthma, we're gonna have a large tidal volume and a slow rate, because this then allows time for exhalation. And also for these patients, we're gonna have a IE ratio. So that's the inspiratory expiratory ratio of ones to four or even one is to six. What this does is it allows them to inhale and then it gives them four to six seconds or a ratio of one to four or one, or one to six. So one fourth of the time, they're gonna have time to exhale all that trapped air out. And for asthma, we're gonna have zero PEEP. There is a big debate about whether we actually should be putting these patients on zero PEEP. I spoke to a intensivist in the ICU at Red Cross and he was saying that initially with asthma, we don't want PEEP once they are on a ventilator. But later on in the progression of the disease, they then actually do need PEEP later on. So we can't just say intubated patients, no PEEP. It's the, in the acute phase, in the pre-hospital phase for asthma, no PEEP. But later on, we are going to have to add PEEP once the bronchial constriction is gone and now they're trying to heal, then you're gonna need to add PEEP to help them oxygenate. So with asthma or obstructive lung, we're gonna have no PEEP. We're gonna have a larger tidal volume and we're gonna have a slower rate, which maintains our minute volume. Our FiO2 can be set to 50 or 100%, and then once the patient is on the ventilator, we can then try and bring that down as much as we can so that their saturation is above 95 and below 99. We don't want it any higher or lower. Then when it comes to oxygenation and ventilation. So ventilation is the movement of carbon dioxide out, and oxygenation is the movement of, of oxygen in. 
So the two settings that impact oxygenation is your PEEP and your FiO2. If you want to have more oxygenation happen, you need more PEEP and you need a greater FiO2. So if you look at this PEEP scale, which I think is very interesting, a lot of people don't know about this, is that if your FiO2 is high, your PEEP should be high. If you have a very high FiO2 and like no PEEP or a PEEP of five, you're actually not doing your patient the best. If you have a high FiO2, you should use a high PEEP. This is going to cause oxygenation. If you have no PEEP on a patient, like with a BVM, a BVM with no PEEP valve, you have no PEEP. Then when it comes to ventilation, the thing that causes ventilation is your respiratory rate and your tidal volume, so your minute volume. If you want to have more ventilation, if you want to blow off more CO2 for whatever reason, you have to increase either your tidal volume or your respiratory rate. PEEP and FiO2 are not going to actually impact your ventilation, only your oxygenation. So guys, I hope that really you know, crushed it down. And if you did like this, please hit like and subscribe. And if you have friends or colleagues who you know who would benefit from this, please share that with them. And thank you for your time. Bye for now.